In this video, I'm going to show you how to properly reconstitute a peptide, which comes in a powdered form when you order it. And I've been using peptides for about four years now. And when I first got into it, I was a complete newbie and I had no idea what to do with it and how to get it back together. So I did tons of research and there was no specific video of exactly here's how you do it. I'm not a doctor and I'm not a chemist. <laughs> so I was starting from zero and I thought it would be helpful to put this video out there for anybody who's experimenting with peptides. The peptide that I'm using today is BPC-157. This is probably the most well-known peptide. It stands for Body Protective Complex and it was originally developed to help with stomach problems. Um, I think it was for ir irritable bowel syndrome. But what they found is that it has an anti-inflammatory effect throughout the body. So it's good for your joints, your ligaments, your muscles, your bones, and inflammation in general. This particular peptide is a blend. It's also got thymosin beta 500 in it. So it's a five milligram blend of both of them. The thymosin beta is another great recovery item. And I just got this in the mail, so I'm going to show you how I reconstitute them. Here are the items that you're going to need. First, I've got my peptide here, which is a blend of BPC-157 and TB-500. So that's Body Protection Complex 157 and Thymosin Beta 500. Next, you're going to need Next, you're going to need bacteriostatic water, and this is what you're going to use to reconstitute the mixture. This is a sterile solution. Once you open it, you should put it in the refrigerator, and it can last, I don't know, almost indefinitely, but you may not want to keep it around forever. Next, you're going to need a three milliliter syringe, and I forget what the gauge is on this, but the gauge is slightly larger. Um, the gauge refers to the size of the needle that's in there. Uh, and this is just to easily get that bacteriostatic water into the vial. Lastly, for your actual injection, I use these insulin needles. This is a 3 tenths milliliter needle uh, and it's a 31 gauge. This one I have the package for. so. Um, I like this one because typically I've got my math worked out and I use the fill line for most peptides to about the four mark here. Uh, that's kind of where you want to start when you're experimenting four or five and see how that makes you feel. You could always go up or down depending on how you feel. Again, you've got to experiment with peptides. There's no exact science and everybody is different. And lastly, you're going to need rubbing alcohol and some clean paper towel. First thing that you want to do is remove this protective cap on top. And you may think that these are sterile because they've got that cap, but you want to sterilize them anyways. So here's where you would put the rubbing alcohol on your paper towel and just give a good wipe onto that rubber part that's underneath the plastic cap. Now you may be tempted to blow on this or wave it around in the air or wipe it again with a dry paper towel, but that's not how the sterilization process works. You want to let it air dry and let that alcohol evaporate off and that's how it kills any germs that may be on there. Great, so once that's evaporated, what you want to do is prime the vial of peptide. And to do that, you're going to take your three milliliter needle with these needles, you always want to move this pump, so prime the pump a little bit because they are sticky. And what you want to do is pull the plunger all the way back and then insert it 
and what this is going to do is pull the plunger back because there's a vacuum seal on there and you could see that happen as I put it in and then it sucks out all the air there because what happens is when you put the bacteriostatic water in there it may spray around a little bit so you want to get that air out first next we're going to fill our three milliliter syringe with two milliliters of bacteriostatic water and my rule of thumb for just about any peptide is two milliliters of water this is a five milligram blend of peptide so the dosage is just about right for me but you can play around with this but I think starting with with any of the milligrams that you get you want to go with two milliliters of water and you could always adjust that down or make your dosages bigger when you fill the insulin syringe or smaller next we're going to next we're going to insert this back into our peptide and you may see the water getting pulled in automatically if not slowly release it onto the side of the vial so these peptides are very delicate and you don't want to smash the water in there because it will disrupt their makeup so slowly inch your water in until it's complete and you may see a bit of a spray when I take this out so be wary of that it's no big deal you're just losing like a drop of the peptide there you go once it's in there you don't want to shake it what you want to do is roll it again these peptides are delicate so you want to just keep rolling it until everything is dissolved and you'll be able to see okay that was a tough one but it looks like it's completely dissolved and if not as it settles it, it will like if you've got any crumbs on the bottom they will eventually get dissolved into the water as you move it around you could just let it sit for a while if you're concerned about it and then it would completely dissolve now before you fill your insulin syringe you definitely want to wipe this off again because you were just handling it and who knows what could be on that cap you are injecting this subcutaneously meaning under the skin these get injected into a fatty area most people choose their fat roll on their stomach because we all seem to have one um, or you could choose a a fatty area on your leg or your side but the stomach is probably the easiest it's virtually painless uh, if you find a spot where it's painful just move the needle over a little bit uh, some areas of your skin are, are a bit more sensitive than others but you should feel nothing and that's the beauty of these insulin needles okay great so the alcohol has completely evaporated we're going to take our insulin needle remove this end cap and then remove the needle protection cap again you want to prime this because they are sticky and right in the center give it a turn upside down and pull your plunger back So like I mentioned, uh, for most peptides, you're going to want to do about four or five on these needles. Again, you have to see how you feel from the peptide, depending on what peptide it is. BPC-157 and, and TB-500 are fairly innocuous. There's, there's hardly any side effects. Some peptides will 
make you queasy, nauseous, achy, uh, etc. But in general, they're safe. Um, so most side effects are limited to pain at the injection site if you hit like a bad spot on your skin. If there's bubbles in there, you can always give it a tap. But it's not a huge concern because this is not going into your bloodstream or your veins. It's just going into your fat cells. So there you have it. This is ready for injection now. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, leave me a comment. Let me know if there's other content about peptides that you want to hear about or anything upgrade biohacking under the sun that you're curious about. I've experimented with just about everything and every day is a new adventure.